FCC's delete, 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 government shutdown. FCC not issuing GMRS or ham radio licenses right now because of the government shutdown. And their Department of Government Efficiency that's uh, taken some stuff away. A brand new news article is out now. We're going to read it today. Once again, this article comes from Natcom Mag, natcommag.com. They have a subscription service. I pay about five bucks a month and I get access to articles like this. So if you guys enjoy this, check out Natcom Mag and subscribe to them because they do have a lot of really good information. I only read a few of the articles. Several of the articles you might get some really good info out of that you'll never hear about on this channel. And this article was written by Chuck into DUP. He's one of the article writers of Natcom Mag, so appreciate them sharing this info. Hobby Radio, FCC's delete, 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 comes to CB, GMRS, and Ham Radio. Summary of this article says the FCC has made minor changes to its rules for Citizens Band, Ham Radio, and GMRS, and the land of mobile radio services for businesses and public safety. These changes are part of the agency's delete, 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 deregulatory initiative, which aims to modernize, eliminate, duplicate rule eliminate duplicate rules and remove outdated regulations. So I know a lot of people are looking around and saying, okay, what outdated regulations do we have? Um, there's some stuff in the ham radio test that is just kind of there, just been there a long time. And uh, there's references to CW Morse code, which there's no CW Morse code that's required for any of the license testing levels anymore. Uh, the issue of GMRS repeater linking has been a hot topic lately. The, um, I heard one person say it best uh, this last week. It's never technically been allowed to link repeaters together over the internet via GMRS. It was just something that just wasn't very regulated. And it, apparently it's still not regulated because reading all the comments from my last couple videos about the subject, uh, there's still a lot of linked repeater systems in the United States right now. So I'm not sure exactly how those are still up, although with the FCC being shut down due to the government shutdown right now, of course, nobody's really doing much of anything. But we've kind of been expecting some deregulation of certain things. I know a lot of people are hoping for deregulation of restrictions around linking for repeaters in GMRS. Uh, some people are hoping that uh, some stuff in CB radio gets deregulated and that kind of thing. So this article serves to say what the next updates are. And quite frankly, reading through here, there's not much. They, they've changed a few things, but there's nothing detrimental. There's nothing earth shattering. There's no big, huge changes that have come out as of yet. Not at the time of this article, which is about two days old at the time of this recording. The FCC last week made some minor changes to rules, not only for Citizens Band and Ham Radio, but also for GMRS. There are also some changes made by land mobile radio services that serve businesses and public safety. So I will link this article below and you guys can read part of this, but they do a really good job on this article breaking down the parts of the FCC document. Part 95, of course, is uh, FRS and GMRS and CB radio. Uh, Citizens Band is uh, another part of Part 95 right there, GMRS. They make a mistype right here, GMRS 97.1741. All of Part 97 is amateur radio, so this should say 95.1741, but that's okay. That's okay. It says GMRS. So Part 97 and some Part 90 public safety stuff there as well. Two or three sections on Part 90. And it details each section that was changed and why they changed it and what their reasoning was behind it. So Part 95, the FCC is deleting a significant section, 95.313, that details fines and penalties that an agency can lodge against violators of the personal radio services, including CBGMRS and, and FRS, and also MERS. The logic here is that the United States Code already addresses these sanctions that the FCC can take against radio operators. In addition, the forfeiture of equipment used in violating rules is also addressed in other FCC rule sections. So one thing I've noticed during this, throughout this article really, is that what they've done is basically eliminate a lot of redundant verbiage. Okay, there's not really any big... Like I said, not anything earth shattering, not any big changes here. They're just kind of streamlining some of the verbiage inside of the parts of uh, 95, 97, and 90, which is good because we all know how redundant and word tornado uh, government documentation can be. So kind of a word salad that doesn't really say much of anything. 
95.351. This section dealing with station identification is being deleted because it basically says that operators of stations in the personal radio services aren't required to transmit any form of station identification unless the rules governing a specific service require station ID. While CB and MERS don't require this because of call signs aren't issued, GMRS does. The FCC decided that including this rule in just GMRS regulations is sufficient. Okay, so this is one thing that I get asked about quite a bit on GMRS videos that I make. And when I'm at Overland shows, I've given presentations on radio services. A lot of people don't know because nobody reads. You sign the document when you get your license or you're digitally signing your name to it, but you're not reading it. So you don't know. It's not really a good idea to sign a document that you haven't read, in my opinion. But... GMRS users are required to ID to throw out their call sign once every 15 minutes. I think ham radio is 10 minutes. I think GMRS is 15 minutes. I'm not sure why it's different. It's kind of dumb. It should be the same across the board. That way everybody's on the same page. But regardless, 95.353, the FCC is deleting a section that tells personal radio service users that they can't transmit false distress signals. Why? Title 47 of the United States Code already says that no one can transmit false calls. Thus, the duplicate rule is deleted here. And again, it seems like they're just deleting a bunch of redundant verbiage and redundant articles throughout the document. 95.363, this deleted rule said that only channels and frequency bands designated for each PRS, personal radio services, may be used. Anyone transmitting on a frequency that is not designated for the service violates Title 47 of the United States Code. Thus, this is another duplicative rule being removed. CB radios, 95.939 and 95.977. The FCC is taking out a sentence that says you can't attach an external radio frequency power amplifier to a certified... Now, when I read this, I'm like, they're taking out a sentence that says you can't attach an external amplifier to a certified CB transmitter only because it repeats what is said in earlier sentences. With that said, yes, it would still be illegal to run an amplifier to boost the power of a CB radio. So when I, I first read the first sentence, I'm like, wait a minute, they're taking out the statement that says you can't use an amplifier on CB? And they said, well, it's said elsewhere. So it's redundant once again. Okay, good. Not that I would have a problem transmitting more power on CB, but, you know, I was wondering what that what that statement was saying. 95.977. Interestingly, the FCC is deleting a section of the CB rules that allows transmitters to transmit a tone at the beginning or end of a transmission. Like a Roger beep, I guess. These commonly referred, yeah, these are commonly called Roger beeps. While removing Roger beeps from the rules, it notes in section 95.377 remains in effect to allow the transmission of audio audible tones for the purposes of select selective calling to open up receiver speakers or sub-audible tones such as CTCSS and DCCS on FMCB. So you can use CTSS. See, back when I was really heavy into CB, FM was not legal. It's possible I ran it once or twice, I'm not going to say, but um, but there was nobody out there, so there's nobody to talk to. So now you can use sub-audible tones, CTCSS tones on FMCB. I wonder if we shouldn't do some experimenting with that. That might be fun. Okay, so the next, uh, uh, this last section of GMRS is, not, again, this should be 95.1741. This section on GMRS antenna height limits being removed because it's already addressed in another section, which is 95.317, as well as it's FCC 17 and FAA administration rules governing antennas and tower heights. So there you go. And then they get into Part 97. Before I talk about Part 97, which is another, it's another more of these redundant rules that are being removed. Today's video sponsor is ABR Coax. If you're running a GMRS radio in your car, base station, CB radio, ham radio, car, base station, whatever, check out abrind.com. ABR Coax is made in the USA. It's made right here in Texas and is some really great, fantastic coax. I partnered with these guys. They're one of my new sponsors on the channel. So if you go out to their website and make a purchase, use the coupon code of ABR10KC5HWB. ABR10, ABR10KC5HWB. It will get you 10% off of most everything on their website. And tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you and thank them for being sponsors of this channel. 97.27, the FCC is deleting this section of rules for amateur radio only because it's already covered in the United States Code and Communication Act of 1934, 97.29, this is a rule that allowed amateurs to ask FCC to replace their paper licenses when their license is lost, mutilated or destroyed. This rule is no longer needed because the FCC 
FCC discontinued providing paper licenses in 2020. You, you now just download a PDF file and you can print it out if you want to. 97.315B2. This rule dictates the external power amplifiers used to boost the signal of amateur radio transmitters need to be certified and that no amplifier capable of operation on frequencies below 144 can be built or modified by non-amateur licensee without certification from the FCC. The FCC is deleting this section of the rule that exempted amps manufactured before April 28, 1978 that were issued as a marketing waiver from the FCC or amps purchased before that date by him to use in her station. We're guessing, this is speculation from the author, we're guessing that the FCC is saying that there are so few of these amps still around after almost half a century. And uh, he, he goes on to say, we know better hams like to hold on to gear. So there might actually be some of those around, but there's no more regulation on them. So there's one less regulation on amplifiers uh, working below two meter, the 2 meter band, 144 megahertz, that are basically homebrew amplifiers. 97.521, since the advent of online tests for amateur radio operators expanded during the COVID pandemic, the FCC is no longer requiring the VEC to serve amateurs in at least the call district where they are established. I never knew that was a thing. They're saying that the, the person giving the exam has to be from your same call district. I never knew that was a thing. Kind of before online testing was a thing, then you would go to a local club and take the exam there. So it it's only logical that there would be people there from your own call district. You're not going to drive several states away just to give an exam and go home again. But now they're saying this is no longer a rule and you know you can take an online test from any call district you want to. And as long as it's a, a certified testing center like a GLARG or ARRL or W5YI or one of these other ones that are giving online testing, then you don't need to be to have your examiner from the same call district as you. Nothing really earth-shattering or groundbreaking or nothing to get worried about at all. And quite frankly, I don't I don't think we're going to see anything anytime soon about this um, this type of thing anyway. But what regulation do you think they should get rid of? Now, some of you come along and say, get rid of ham radio licensing. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay, you should totally have to take a test to get your ham radio license. Some of the questions could stand to be updated. I'll give you that, okay? But um, but the reason you get more privileges in your ham radio license is because you've taken the time to sit down and study and learn the material and go and take a test. Unlike GMRS that you just buy, and unlike FRS, MERS, and CB radio that anyone can use for free. So ham radio, I've, I've made a whole video about ham radio is not a violation of your freedom of speech because anyone can sit down and take the test and get access to those frequencies. And there's plenty of free band frequencies out there where you don't need to take a test at all and you just buy a radio and go to town. Those of us who have taken the time, and it's open to everybody. Here's the kicker. It's open to everybody. Ham radio is open to everyone. There are certain stipulations and rules for convicted felons and whatnot, but other than that, it is open to everyone. So if someone else took the time and effort to go get their ham radio license, then what makes you so special where you shouldn't have to do the same thing? Ham radio licensing is here to stay. It has existed prior to the FCC. It predates the FCC. And if the FCC were to get abolished tomorrow, we would still have ham radio licensing, probably through the ITU or one of the other international, may ARRL, ITU, something like that, because guess what? Uh, we cooperate with every other country on the planet in a licensing format and have for many, many years. So, But I would like to know what you think. What kind of things sh should you think they should delete? Something that's out old, outdated, something that's redundant? Put a comment in the video below and let me know. 73, we'll catch you next time.